Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Carleen, your host. And if you are new to this channel, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. I consider myself a psychic medium muse. And I hope to provide inspiration to you to maneuver through your life. <laughs> okay, so before I get into the collective reading and the pick a card reading for the week ahead, I'd like to remind you that June 18th, there's an activation coming up. This activation is a gift from the heart. It's free from Curtis Goddard. And we have done two amazing interviews so far, which I encourage you to go check it out and to maybe have the courage to show up, to have the courage to show up at this activation. And um, you are more than welcome. It is a safe space, a healing space. But this is a topic that does need to be addressed within the spiritual community as well. And I'm so glad that Kurtrice has taken that up. Now, on June 23rd, we're going to have a Jaguar healing ceremony, and that's to move back into your power to get your willpower heightened again, amongst various other things that I'll be healing or well, I won't be healing, but opening the space for healing to occur or happen. And um, check it out. More information is going to be in the description box below this video. So let's get started on the collective read, then we'll dive into the choice and then we'll dive into the pick a card reading. Okay, so uh, already pulled the cards and um, let's have a look for the collective what's going on. So where I'm at right now, the collective is kind of it, it, it's an interesting energy because on the one hand, it, it feels sulky and pouty. And on the other hand, yeah, it's, it's a little bit open and hopeful still. So we're having elections today here where I am, and it's the EU parliamentary elections are today, but it's it's kind of, I don't know, the energy is very... <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave it at that. But the overall energy for the collective at this time, and we're speaking about the collective mind here, so the hive mind of humanity... <laughs> Um, what's going on there. And it's kind of looking to the past. Yeah, it's it's feeling like it's been left out to deal with all of this on its own, because the past solutions aren't working anymore. We discussed that in last week's, I think, um, uh, collective reading, but the past solutions aren't working anymore. So here we see the mentor and the mentee and the ment the, the child or the youth that is to be mentored, that the next generation is looking towards the elderly for answers and solutions. But I it's like he's looking into this book and nothing is coming up and out. So let's see if I can get it. Yeah, see? So he's an elderly mage and he's trying to teach this one, look, this is how you do it. This is what you, but it doesn't apply. So there's this look of confusion on this, 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 youngster's face because everything that or well not everything but a lot of what is being taught just doesn't apply in our world today anymore there is a um the look on his face is not just um I'll, I'll put a picture right here actually the look on his face is not just a um a look of of there's so much emotion on that face that I'm picking up. There's this um, affection. There's this um, looking towards the elderly with affection, looking towards the the older ways of going with, with a little bit of condescension, a little bit of affection, a little bit of confusion, and a little bit of, you know what, I'm going to do it my own way anyways. <laughs> so it feels as if the collective is, is um, there's this energy that's, that's rising. And we spoke about that in the 6-6 portal video as well, where there's this, group that is just separating itself from everything that's going on because it just has stopped making sense a long time ago and the story doesn't make sense the storyline doesn't make sense the the characters in the story doesn't make sense but we're all sticking to it as if this is the only way and there is a new consciousness that is rising saying you know what <laughs> you do you <laughs> we're just going to be over here and we're going to start new and it literally feels as if people are stepping out of the matrix by remaining in the matrix. So another thing that is coming up, which I forgot to mention in previous videos, is 
people getting oversaturated, for example, with social media, with um, things that are being sold along the lines of, you know, you have to make be a millionaire before you're 30, you have to do this to gain so and so many followers, you have to like, all this social media mindset and lifestyle, it's now starting to un rewind. So we're having we're seeing a rise in offline coffee shops, we're seeing a rise in people just being happy to be in the matrix and having their their needs met, you know, going to their daily job, but utilizing the time that they have left more deeply, more intensely, more with more focus on really experiencing happiness and joy, really experience outside of uh, career successes, really finding ways to connect with one another deeper in relationships, really um, taking care of family. So there's this uh, feeling or wave of nostalgia, I'd say, that's also coming up this week, this looking a little bit to the past, um, but not wanting to uh, re-embody it necessarily okay so how everybody the collective sees itself is the four of swords this is a quiet card and we see that there's a little bit of stealth and planning there's a lot going on in this card so we see this lady who's um letting the sands of time run through her hands and we're seeing these people looking at a monument okay and here's a light that is coming in. So there's some kind of a distraction again. And um, people are just waiting for the other shoe to drop. This is the energy that I'm picking up. Um, people know something's coming, something's about to happen, but this is like the quiet before the storm, or even the eye in the storm. But this is in this is a kind of quietness which holds or carries a lot of tension. Um, there's a, a, an attempt to release tension. We see that with her hands um, and the sand drifting through her hands. So there's this attempt to release the tension and release time here. But it's it's still, mm, there's this energy, okay? So how only within itself what's really going on within the collective what the collective is deeply feeling and not acknowledging is that they're fed up they're done this is the nine of wands this is deep resistance this is deep pushback this is also hard work this is um carrying a burden this is endurance enduring 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 this is discipline this is patience. This is all of that. And so the collective is kind of in this endurance and discipline and withstanding kind of energy. Yeah. And it feels as if nothing's really moving. It does feel a little stagnant in this energy. It's this inhale, but there's no exhale coming. And so there's this this feeling of waiting, 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 but we're waiting for the other shoe to drop and it's just not dropping. So what the collective doesn't see about itself is it's in a healing mode, king of cups. Yeah. And it's looking for a savior. You know, that's the other shoe that's going to drop is it's looking for a savior. Um, I want to say that a lot of people are following the elections in the U.S. The U.S. elections is unique in the way that affects people worldwide more than their own personal local community collective elections. Um, the U.S. has left uh, quite a mark in the, the, the consciousness of people worldwide as a light bearer. Um, we see that as well in um, the, the statue in um new york <laughs> oh my god it's statue of liberty in new york the Freiheitsstatue. so um we see that statue of liberty in new york uh, holding a light unto the world and this is what the u.s was supposed to represent was supposed to represent a light leading into a new age leading into a modern age a um an age of light a golden age right so of course, there are many different esoteric uh, interpretations what that Statue of Liberty represents. We could also call it Lucifer, the light bringer, um, many different things. 
Um, also to the American experiment, there's a lot to say, which would, you know, burst what I'm trying to speak about here. But it feels because the King of Cups is a blonde haired, blue eyed represents blonde haired, blue eyed people, that there is this thought that, oh, my gosh, there's our savior. And um, that is a very, very um dangerous well not dangerous but you know when 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 people get disappointed once again because they voted for a human being then you know what what what's gonna happen then so it feels as if um they're waiting for the other shoe to drop but they're looking to the united states the world is looking to the united states for that other to to point the way forward again and um, in spite of other groups and organizations popping up and rising up, there's something deeply ingrained in the collective to arrange their moves according to what the U.S. does. So not necessarily of their own accord. It's always in reaction to not a response to their own impetus, but a reaction to what the U.S. does. So there's there's that other shoe that's that's waiting to drop and um people are kind of armored up they're armoring up collectively for tougher times to come also hoping for a savior hoping for a um christ-like figure to show up the king of cups is a healer this is someone who can um direct the emotions of others as well their own emotions quite uh, under control this is someone who is not afraid of who gives the feeling of I can get close to this person, I can connect with this person, this person would allow me to connect to them. This is a person of the people. And there's someone who does that ex extremely well in the US at this moment, who's also blonde and blue eyed. And I feel like there's a topic around that situation coming up again this week. So what people do not see about this era and this time is the light. This is the sun. This is probably going to go down in history as one of the eras of um, another era of enlightenment, a second era of enlightenment, just like we had the age of enlightenment and we had the Renaissance. Um, as people were living in those ages, I'm pretty sure they didn't find it to be uh, really fantastic. <laughs> but here we are in our own age of wow, where there's so much newness happening, so many changes happening, so many um, cultural changes as well that are occurring, that people aren't really realizing that this is this is this is where we're at, you know, we're going to see the ramifications of the decisions being made and the experiences being had now, far in the future. But this is our golden moment, and we're not seeing that at this time. A lot of energy happening. And so the advice card here is to tread softly. This is the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is advising always to tread softly, to be gentle, to always be kind, be willing to be kind, be willing to be um, gentle in responses and actions. There's three cups cards. So cups, feelings, emotions are dominating. And it feels as if um, we're also learning because the page of cups has to do with learning, right? The pages are learning. We say here in the six of cups learning, and we're moving from a learning to do magic in a sense, right? With the Six of Cups to the outcome to the Page of Cups, which is learning to heal. And healing can be magical as well. Healing can be extremely magical. Um, it can be beautiful. It can be profound. It can be deeply moving, deeply. But opening up the floodgates again, here we have a lot of intellect and a lot of knowledge and a lot of knowing. But here we have a lot of feeling, experiencing with the water in the background, intuition. Now, another thing that this card can represent, the sun card in the hidden space, is that God is not seen anymore. And... Um, there's this shift in our, our way of perceiving our spiritual universe, our spiritual selves. 
our um our place in this universe and it's it's coming up more and more it's starting in the emotional realm the feeling realm the sensing realm uh but it's coming up more and more into the the intellectualized arena as well so there's this shift in how how we see spiritual life yeah um this is this is slowly coming up more and more and more but yeah so it also feels as if uh these two cards are connected so this six of um this learning magic and this savior figure there's something about father religions oh gosh i i oof. yo 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 okay there's something about father religions yeah like the abrahamic religion is a father religion in in my terminology and um there's something about receiving the old teachings and i feel like this king is this one grown up because he's holding the book I'm trying to uh, show you he's holding the book here and he's holding the cup see the cup and the book and he has the knowledge now and he's also learned how to fight he's taken the knowledge he's learned how to fight he's coming into his own so there's something about um humanity you know enduring hanging in there holding out um waiting for things to pass waiting for time to pass relying on old structures and things that no longer really serve but they're not seeing the magic they're not seeing the lights they're ignoring the spiritual light which gives creativity which gives possibility which gives all kinds of things and the advice card is to learn to heal that to and again this is feminine as well so here we have moving from the masculine way of doing things into the feminine way of doing things and feminine doesn't mean womanhood or you know any of that um but the receptive way the masculine way is the external way of going out doing things the feminine way is receiving transmuting and being right so it's um it feels as if that way has to be mastered now because we've mastered the other way so now it's time to master the feminine way but we're as a collective we're not yet stepping into that so it's the advice is to take it slowly one step at a time to remember the magic to remember the magic that we are the magic that we do the magic that we our lives are that we're even alive that we think that we feel that we breathe that we connect that we communicate that we are magical beings that we are completely magic in a magical world that all of this is is against all odds that we exist and for this amount of time for this period and length of time that we actually exist in with with literally honestly there is no end to us in sight yet um there are of course thoughts and um plans that if we evolve and continue to evolve as humanity eventually we're going to have to leave the planet eventually we're going to have to become a space-faring species and that is the root of a lot of things that are being done today because people in certain positions see this coming and so they're trying to um make human make humanity can we say make humanity evolve humanity into a certain direction that we can actually become a spacefaring race so it's it's um but there's a lot of emotional healing that still needs to occur and part of that emotional healing has to do with finding the magic again, finding the magic in our existence, in our lives, um, leaving certain questions unanswered. That is part of magic, is not having the answers to every question or understanding everything in this tiniest detail because understand to understand to stand under, right? So again, domination. And everybody knows once we understand something, it kind of loses its magic. Once we've taken it apart, it loses its magic. And so some things are just meant to be an eternal mystery. And 
it's okay that way. We don't need to have an answer or a solution for every single thing, um, especially when it comes to to spiritual um, constructs. Sometimes this is the mystery. What's inside of that light? Who knows? Um, who will be able to define that? Because the minute we define something, we're also limiting it. And um, when we limit something, then it never will show itself to us in its full potential or its full glory. It's never going to be experienced as its true self. So this is why we we should stay away from defining certain things about spirituality or spiritual existence or spiritual heritage um, and, and keep those things mystical and sacred. Okay, let's move into our choice. And um, for that, you're going to have the choice between three images coming up right now. And these three images, as you're choosing them, you can see the extended version over on my Patreon. If you are on my Patreon, you'll find the extended versions to these videos over there where I dive deeper into love and money for your week ahead. Um, these are general readings. Of course, if you'd like a personal reading, I'm more than happy to dive into your potentials, opportunities, and... Um, yeah, occurrences with you, your pathway and see what lies, what lies ahead. Okay. And for that, you'll also find a link to book your session in the description box below this video. All right. So once you've chosen, you can also pause right here if you need more time. And let's dive in. Those of you that chose Pile number one, what's coming up for you? What do you need to know? What is your message for this week ahead or this week coming up? What is the message that you need to hear? What is the message that you need to hear? Okay. The overall energy for you, pile number one, is... Um, the Three of Cups, yeah? And the Three of Cups is community. It's coming together in community. It's enjoying one another's company. It's um, enjoying one another's space and time, sharing, caring. It's creativity as well. And it's, it's feeling open, open-hearted, openly creative. It's an atmosphere of an energy where there's a lot of flow. There's not a lot of restriction. And it feels like this is a yes week for you. So it would behoove you, it would benefit you to say yes to certain things that come your way, whether it be a um, somebody's inviting you to something, somebody's offering you something as, as some kind of an offer or something pops up in your life or new things that come into your life. It would be a good thing for you to say yes to that. So you're moving out of this transitionary energy. There's some kind of a transformation that's happened in your life. We've got the death card here. And this is what you're moving out of, yeah? So the death card is you've been brought to new shores, okay? You've released something out of your past. You may have um, broken up with someone. You may have moved away from something. You may have quit your job. But some kind of a marketed transition happened that is now catapulting you into your new trajectory or your new pathway forward. Um, it also could be that you quite literally lost someone, and that is the case, my condolences. But it does feel as if something has come to a close for you, where a chapter has finally resolved itself or come to a close. It could also be that you're leaving something behind, that you're feeling like, um, okay, like this doesn't need to, um, I don't need to take this into the future with me anymore, this fear, this anxiety, this worry, this care, these thoughts, this mindset, and you're finally leaving that behind. So it can be really subtle, it can be very in your face, depending on your circumstance, but some kind of an ending that is catapulting you now into this openness, creative energy where anything goes almost, and whatever comes your way, you should say yes to. Here you have the Six of Cups. You feel like you're still a learner, and people may think that you're still a learner as well. You're still learning your way forward. You're still learning your pathway. Um, they may feel as if you're still... Um, 
you know, not quite sure which pathway you're going to take. And um, so there's looking for guidance, looking for advice that is coming up this week. Of course, it could also mean that others turn to you looking for guidance and advice. That's highly possible as well. How you feel about yourself is the eight of pentacles. You're really focused on your work. You're really willing to put in the effort, put in the time, put in the work. Um, you're willing to uh, really work hard at something to make something come about. You want to become a master at what you do. That's the other thing. Some of you are really ambitious and you're wanting to master what it is that you do. You're wanting to master your um, creativity, your creative endeavors, your side job, but whatever it is you're wanting to master or hone your skills, master a certain talent, you want recognition for what you do as well. The Three of Cups can give you that this week. The Six of Wands is indicating that people see you as goal-oriented and focused this week. They perceive you as being very focused on winning, very focused on reaching your goal, very focused on achievement and achieving something. Spirit is asking you to remind yourself to be balanced. Six of sacred circles. This is the, the prayer flags or bags that are placed in a tree. And to remind yourself that, you know, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you pray for because you just might get it. They also see you as the answer to someone's prayers. So someone may have been praying you into their life, quite literally, you may hear that this week, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you helped me. I'm so glad I can talk to you. I'm so glad you're in my life. But you seem to be the answer to someone's prayers. And um, you were sent by divine light, right and might into a specific situation that you're going to find yourself this week. And um, through your inclination and your intention to work really hard and be the best that you can be, you become the answer to a certain prayer. Don't forget your own prayers. Don't forget to pray. Don't think that you have to do everything by yourself. Everything's on your shoulders. Everything's your responsibility. Don't do that. Shake it off. Pray for what it is that you desire. Set your intention for your further goal. And then just take the steps that you can take in your own time in the best way that you know how towards it. Now, the final piece of advice is exactly that. Let go. Learn to release. Those of you that chose number one, this is the fool card. And it's, you know, completely at the beginning of something. And that's, that's, that's exactly, you know, you're coming full circle here. So you have the death card in the beginning, these ending and transition, and now you're in the full phase where anything goes, right? And um, you could try anything and it would probably work out for you. It definitely also feels as if it's time to let go, to, to release all expectations in this heavy weight of responsibility that you may have been carrying on your shoulders to let that go, to, to release that, okay? All right, you guys, if you would like to see the extended version of your reading, make sure to head on over to my Patreon and become a member. See you on the next one. Bye. Those of you that chose number two, what's coming up for you? Number two. Number two, those that chose number two, their week ahead message, their week ahead message, please. Number two. Your overall energy number two is the seven of pentacles or here the seven of sacred circles. And this definitely gives the feeling and the impression that, you know, there's a lot of work to be done here, um, or there was a lot of work for little yield. It feels as if the planning, this is a planning stage as well. And even though we see a harvest here on this card, the thoughts are already in the next stage of harvesting, which means I have to plan the sowing, the clearing, the sowing, the reaping, the harvesting. <clears throat> 
And so there's a lot to, to plan here. And we also see accounting. So there's accounting for, accounting of, and it feels some of you may be in accounting, some of you may be in bookkeeping, some of you may be dealing with that this week in some way, shape or form. You may feel like, you know, you need to get your books in order, you need to um, get things straightened out, squared away this week. But there's an accounting that has happened and accounting for being held accountable is another thing that, of course, comes up in this wordplay is being held accountable for something or um, letting yourself be held accountable for something. Now, in the past, we've got the page of swords. And so this is the overall energy of the past and the lessons that you're taking forward with you. And this is utilizing and finding information, being an, an information finder. And it feels as if you know where and how and to find certain things, to find out certain things. But it's also time to observe, right? So it's not necessarily a time to do something, but it would be um, a good time for you to observe before really making a decision, but really moving forward. You need more information this week before you really um, dive into something, before you commit yourself to something, before you um, say yes to something, okay? So how everyone sees you is the 10 of wands. You're overwhelmed, okay? And people see that you are carrying a heavy burden. And um, there's maybe a new project that you're starting, but there's also a, a current project that's running aside long you, but you're carrying the weight of previous burdens as well. And you're trying to take care all of it, of all of it. And the overwhelm for you is real and people do see that. And sometimes people want to help you and they're just not quite sure how, because it seems that you're the only one who can carry what you're carrying. There's a lot of juggling as well, I feel, this week. A lot of juggling um, different hats, different responsibilities that is coming up. It, this is a hardworking week, okay? For those of you that chose number two, it already, I'm already, the energies feel hardworking. They feel focused. They feel concentrated. Um, they feel like, you know, you're also carrying in your energy the expectations of others, the desires of others, the, the, intentions of others, the fears of others, there's something very connected to other that's in your field that's also weighing you down. And um, it feels like people have left you as well with things to take care of or to clear that aren't even yours. They're not even yours, but somebody has to do it. So you do it because it has to be done. Otherwise, it's in your way and in the way of your loved ones. And you have to take care of it, even though it's not your responsibility per se. So you're carrying all this and pushing ahead. And people do notice that they do see that. And um, they just don't know how to help you. Some people see you doing this, and it's a reason for them to also look down on you. So this is also something that you're picking up on. Okay. Then you have the queen of pentacles as this is how you perceive yourself and your strength. Some of you are very tied to your grandmother. Yeah. And this may be your grandmother coming through and giving you energy, giving you guidance, giving you, letting you know that you are under her protection still, that you are under her guidance, under her protection, that she's watching over you. Some of you are feeling the need for a maternal comfort. You feel um, lost because this maternal comfort that is supposed to give you strength and nourishment and guidance in your life, it just doesn't seem to be there. So maybe you're the one who's giving it to everyone, but who's giving it to you. So another thing how everyone sees you is the page of sacred circles that you are learning about how to handle and take care of yourself, how to say no, how to lay down the burdens that are not yours, how to move into a fruitful cycle. Um, accepting your femininity, accepting your place and your role in this world, finding your place, finding your pitch, so to speak, right? When it comes to your voice, when it comes to singing, finding that that um, groove that is absolutely yours. So there's a lot of self-finding within this working that is coming up for you this week. Now, what you don't notice and see is the tower, yeah, that... Um, the pain and the wounding that you've endured in the past is definitely coming to bear. But also, um, this is an infusion of divine spirit that divinity is reconnecting to you and tearing down 
all those structures, taking down all this weight that isn't yours to carry, that isn't yours to build or to live in or to um, maintain. This is this is too heavy. It's too much. It's not yours. And the divine is coming in and it's taking it out. So this week may feel as if, you know, something's um, going on in your life where you can't feel the right way forward, even where you feel like, I don't know, I, I just don't have the right information. I need more information. I need more support as well. And you may be praying for that support. You may be praying for that guidance and it is coming. However, it may be coming in a way that you're like, what the, <laughs> why, why? So when it comes, let go just let it go. Trust. This is a deep, deep core lesson in trust for you. And um, you have to learn to trust again, inner guidance, spirit, God, you name it. You have to be willing to trust. And trust is something that we do without information, without knowledge. So if you have that habit of, I need more information, which is it, it's, that's what we're talking about here, to be asked to trust on these deep inner levels is is a tall order, right? But um, you have to step out there, you have to take a step, Luke Skywalker, <laughs> into the unknown. And um, you have to trust that what is happening in your life is for the best is for a good outcome. And only good things will come to pass from it. Yeah, so it's, it's, you might come up with the idea to walk away again, to, to leave something that is just, this is the eight of cups, to leave something behind that is just no longer working out for you. That is no longer um, offering you what you felt or what you'd hoped it would offer you, what you hoped it would give to you. So you're walking away from it this week because it's, it's just too much. Um, it's time to put down the burdens. Yeah, it's time to put down the ideas, the mindset, the principles, the priorities, the things that were given to you that you let yourself be defined by and as it's time to put that down, walk away and go on this discovery, trust that um, you're you're going to find out who you truly are, you're going to um, find those reclaim those beautiful parts of yourself, you're going to walk in the light of God in the light of spirit in the light of truth, and that all of this other stuff wasn't true. Some of you are also carrying burdens from your maternal ancestry, which you felt the need to carry you felt the need that you had to carry this forward this is your responsibility now it's like the baton was passed to you and you took it because that's what all the other women in your ancestry and ancestral line did and spirits like you didn't have to take it you could have said no <laughs> so you still have that opportunity to put it down so it doesn't get passed on but you can also utilize it as your stick as a warning or as a guide or as a crutch if you will but um, it's no longer defining you or your purpose. It's no longer weighing you down. You've you've only kept one stick from this whole bundle. See this bundle? And you've kept one. And um, that is the most important one to you and the one that still connects you to this lineage. But it's time for you to put the weight down, put the burden down um, that you've been carrying forward all this time. Okay? All righty. Um, Again, the extended version with love and on the career you'll find over on my Patreon. Moving onward to those of you that chose a number three and your week ahead message. What message do you need to hear, number three, for this week ahead? For this week ahead. The message you need to hear for this week ahead. One already fell out, so we're going to leave it there. Number three, those that chose number three, those that chose number three, the overall energy. You get two overall energy cards, or three, two. We've got the world and the nine of sacred, uh, yeah. 
So those of you that chose number three, you've got the world. Something has come to a completion, a good completion and a closure. It's like the spirit is congratulating you. You passed. Um, maybe you got a degree. Maybe you passed something. Then we have the nine of sacred circles, feeling content with oneself and feeling content with what you've worked for and what you have. Now, the card that came up that flew out of the deck was the five of swords. This has to do with competition, has to do with stress and strain, can be minor operations cuts, um, but also backstabbings and betrayals. So I'm just going to put that over there and let's see how this all ties together for you. The energy that you're moving out from is, yeah, okay? Those of you that chose number three, you are a bright, shining, beautiful something. <laughs> and it seems that whatever you try works out for you. Whatever you put your hand to just comes together for you. And it doesn't look to other people like you put in a lot of effort or investment into what you achieve or what you accomplish. You know you do. You know you do. But you make it look so easy that other people question it and they get jealous of it. Would they fall into competition with you? They try to take from you. I'm uh, going to be doing a, a series on um, certain types of women and females, but there's one who takes from others, who has no sense of self-identity or, or self, and they move through and they, they take aspects of women that they admire or they think, oh, that's good about them. I'm just going to take it as if they're in a grocery store and they're entitled to it. And they try to pack it into themselves and they turn themselves into monsters because they're greedy. They um, steal energy and things of other women. Um, it's not an inspiration. It's not being inspired by another woman, respecting her, respecting what she's doing and acknowledging that it's literally a theft, right? And um, so it feels like, you know, you're one of those that gets stolen from and without realizing. And you may come into a, a space for yourself where you're like, take it. You know, <laughs> I'm a bright shining light and where that came from, more is to come. And um, if you utilize it for a good thing, who am I to say? Maybe it'll transform you further on down the line, whatever, you know, but at the same time, it's important for you to acknowledge yourself, acknowledge who you are, acknowledge your strengths, acknowledge your gifts, acknowledge your beauty, acknowledge your all the positive things about you. And but it does feel as if there's some kind of a shadow, some kind of a being, some kind of a person that is continually trying to stab you for it to to take chunks of you. I can't describe it any other way. Here we have the Hierophant. You came in gifted. You came in blessed. Yeah. And the Hierophant has to do with, um, of course, going a traditional route, going down a pathway of um, knowledge as well going down a pathway of passing on traditions. It may be a good time for you this week to do an initiation right, you know, do these um, deeper meditations, sign up for my Jaguar healing ceremony, do an initiation right that that allows you to step deeper into who you are. You may be opening up on those deeper levels and bringing through even more guidance, even more transmissions, even more information than you have before. How you see yourself this week is the six of sacred circles. This is going into prayer, going into connection, going into balance, yeah, with the spiritual side of life. Um, learning to become a manifesting maven. That's another thing about you. You know how to manifest. How others see you is the two of wands. Speaking of manifestation, yeah, um, looking out into the world and realizing and knowing I can make this happen. Wow, this is, you know. Um, this is what I'm going to be focusing on. This is what I'm going to be doing. This is what I'm going to be um, investing my time, effort and energy into. So people see you this week as also being very focused, but also a little bit of a dreamer. Um, also, the whole thing here is going into spirituality this week for you, building more or deeper, or more solid foundations in the world of spirituality, in your spiritual healing, in your spiritual gifts, um, and looking to the future to what can I do to expand? How can I give more? How can I expand on what I've been giving? How spirit sees you is an aspect of the empress. Yes, initiation, those of you that chose number three is very important for you, okay? This will provide you with the protections as well and the deeper guidance that you need 
um, to move forward on your, your pathway, but it feels as if you're an expression of the divine, you're an expression of the feminine, your expression of, and the divine is considered in many esoteric circles, the radiance of God, literally the dress of God, <laughs> that which um, gives expression to form to the intentions of God. And um, so it feels as if you're an aspect of that. You're coming into your femininity. You're going into your feminine role a lot more. You're finding your high priestess energy. You're becoming that intermediary between spirit and, and here. And um, maybe you don't believe in yourself as much, but other people see it. They see it. They see the shine. They see the radiance. They see the glow. Yeah. And um, it feels, though, as if you've got this sneaky, unhealed, either an unhealed aspect of yourself or someone else's unhealed inner child, wounded inner child that is kind of stalking you, watching you and trying to take pieces of you. Um, this could be other friends as well, but definitely someone who's trying to take your mask and wear it. Yeah, they 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 literally want to own your persona. And um, again, like I said, this is not inspiration, it's theft. And here we have theft, the seven of swords. Okay. Those of you that know me know I place the cards face down always when I read because it keeps me in my flow. And so I don't see the cards until I turn them around to show you. And I was speaking about theft this whole time. The energy was theft. And here we literally have this theft that is, is happening. You need to protect yourself. You need to understand that it's okay to protect yourself. It's not okay to allow people to thief from you. And you might see yourself as this radiant shining sun and, you know, it's all free. <laughs> Everybody come take pieces of me. But that's not what God intended. That's not what the divine intention is. The divine intention is that you step into your power because you need to in order to transmit the energies and the information that the divine created you to transmit and you can't have people taking stones from your throne because that will make your throne crumble. And when their throne crumbles, you can't transmit the information you're meant to transmit. These people that thief from you, they can't transmit the information. They're not, that's not what they're there for. So them taking from you is undermining the divine mission. You allowing it to happen is you undermining the divine mission and you turning them into your your person giving you orders kind of thing, right? So you don't, that's not going to happen. You have to, you know, acknowledge this. You have to acknowledge this five and seven of swords that yes, people do get jealous of you. Yes, people take pieces of you. Yes, people take things from you and um, try to utilize it in their own way. Try to, you know, gain, gain, um, what do you call it? Gain acknowledgement and gain recognition through waving your flags and dressing in your feathers. And you need to stop that. But because you're not dressing in your own feathers and you're not waving your own flags, guess what? They're picking it up and doing it for you. So, but they're not doing that great of a job as you would do if you would do it because you came in with a mission and a purpose. Okay. What a message, you guys. Okay, what a message. All right, I will see you for the extended version over on Patreon, all right? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to sign up for the Jaguar Healing Ceremony and the activation with Kurt Therese Goddard, and I will see you there. Take care, and further information for your personal booking and your personal session, you'll find in the description box below this video. Bye.